everyone, and welcome to Chapter 4 of the course where we'll be creating reference sheets for our original characters. In the last chapter, we took our characters from a rough concept to a refined, finalized design that we can work with. But before we're ready to put our character into action, there's some important prep work that we need to do that'll save us some time and headaches in the long run. That's making reference sheets. By making these for our characters, we can keep track of certain details, size differences, and any rules we need to keep in mind so that our drawings can stay consistent. So for example here with my little pilot character, we have uh, these two drawings here, front view and three quarters. We'll get more into this as we do turnaround sheets, but you'll see these little guidelines I have drawn through her. Something that will help you keep your character uh, consistently proportioned as you draw them, for example, is measuring out their height in heads. So, for example, we have these brackets here. Each line up with her head size. So as we can see here, one, two, three, four, a little pilot character. Oh, four heads tall. And things like that will come in handy as we draw her in the future. It doesn't have to be exact, but it can be a general guide to know that we're drawing her in the correct proportions. Now you may find that over the course of your uh, work on a book or comic that your style may develop and change slightly as you improve or become more familiar with what you're drawing. This is normal, and it's a sign that your drawing skills are actually becoming stronger. Even I have little inconsistencies in my own work that I later become aware of. So while we do want to strive for consistency as much as possible, we don't need to be painstakingly obsessive uh, in our work. Chances are, many readers won't notice these little uh, quibbles. Now, what you also may find is that the more you draw your characters, the more familiar you'll become with them naturally. And so you won't need to refer to these reference materials as often. But in the beginning stages, these are an incredibly helpful guide. Character lineups, for example, are a great way to keep the proportions in mind between your characters. So let's say you draw a little kid character like this, and they have a big head like many of them do. You want to make sure you've scaled your kid proportionally uh, to the adult characters, because let's say they have to pick them up the kid's head is about twice the size of the mom's head. So in that case we've probably made a mistake and would want to readjust our head sizes. Let's make hers a little bit bigger, and we can make his a little smaller. And there we can go a little smaller. There we go, he's about two heads tall. Now if we compare, That looks a lot better. So I encourage you guys to keep tracks of this as you draw like your cast of characters, as it'll save you uh, time trying to correct your mistakes later on in the actual comic. What you can also do with reference sheets that I love is save precious time by creating assets that you can reuse. An asset in this instance refers to a piece of artwork that you can use for multiple purposes or reuse in different instances. This can be a background illustration, a certain prop drawing, or even parts of a character. What these sheets can also do for you is save precious time by creating assets that you can reuse. An asset in this instance refers to a piece of artwork that you can use for multiple purposes or reuse in different cases in comics. So this can be like a background illustration, a certain prop drawing, or even parts of a character, like I have here, for example. These are from Miami Comics, of course, and I ref I'll frequently reuse assets I've created with head shapes. I have several folders here in my brush presets, as you can see. Emmy heads, Madeline heads. 
These help me stay consistent as possible with the proportions and scale, and it saves me a great deal of time having to redraw all the details of the head over and over. This may seem like a bit of a cheat or a hack thing to do for some beginning artists, but professionals do this all the time. The key is just not to make it too obvious. Like here, for example, try to avoid reusing the same exact expressions if you can. Uh, you know, make sure to vary the tilt of the head every now and then. And, uh, you know, don't use body language that's too similar in back-to-back -back panels. As you can see here, this just looks like a zoomed-in version of this drawing, or like I just copy and pasted the head into this panel. It's not as good as, say, something like this. Again, a little more obvious than I would care for, but just for the sake of this example, you can see what a difference even little things can make, like a difference in expression. Now, how I created these assets for Emmy is by making stamp tools with the brush preset. So I drew all these heads, and then I added all these guidelines to draw them from different angles while keeping them all proportionate and making the scale uh, consistent. So what I did is, once I had the cleaned and inked drawing, Let's take one of Madeline's heads, for example. I make sure no other layers are visible with it. I take my lasso tool, and I select around the head. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer that these are drawn on. Then I go up to my Edit menu at the top. I go down and select Define Brush Preset. Now we have an example, and I'm going to type in Madeline Head Profile Right, because she's facing right. Now obviously I have this saved already, so I don't need to save it, but if you do, you press OK. And then, there you go, it'll be like a stamp. And it will show up here in this brush preset menu. I'm not going to need that because I already have it, so I'll throw that away. Depending on your art style or the complexity of your characters, you may not need something like this. It works for my art style in this comics case, and it helps a great deal. But if you prefer to keep things uh, in a looser, sketchier style, that's also fine. For example, I never used assets on my book 21 Terrifying Monsters, at least not assets like these, because I would only be drawing each character once. However, even I had reference sheets when it came to things such as color palettes, and we'll be discussing that in the next video. So I'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.